But if you're wanting to plant as many in there as possible, let's talk about the limits there. So I think you could get What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Sunday, April 7th here in South Georgia. And lately we've been getting a lot of questions about how many tomato plants or how many pepper plants can you fit in a raised bed? So today we're gonna try to answer that question as we get some of these babies here planted in these raised beds behind me. So a few videos ago, we got the majority of our tomatoes planted in this in-ground plot here behind me, a row of determinants and a row of indeterminates. And these are already taking off and growing. We've been out of town for a few days, but it was nice and cool. I wasn't worried about them too much. I do have the drip running on these now. Doesn't appear that they suffered much transplant shock at all, and it'll be time to heal these before you know it. Now when we planted those transplants, I showed y'all and told y'all how those weren't the best looking tomato transplants I had ever grown. I didn't fertilize them as much as I should have because we had all those fig trees in the greenhouse. Well, let me show you what the difference a week and ramping up our fertilizer concentration makes. So once we got those fig trees out of the greenhouse, we were able to start pushing these a lot harder with that agarthrive fruit and flower. And this is the type of tomato transplant I'm used to growing. That's what they should look like. Nice and green and healthy. Peppers look awesome too. But man, these tomato transplants have really turned the corner in just a week or so. So now let me show you where we're gonna be putting some of these. One of these beds is race ready to go. The other one, we'll have to do a little bit of harvesting and clean up in. So this bed is one we got ready quite a few weeks ago, maybe a month, month and a half ago. Got the rest of those Louisiana evergreen shallots out of here, amended it with some coop grow and some mushroom compost, and it's just kind of been hanging out. We have been keeping some water on it, keep everything alive in there, keep the soil biology alive. All we gotta do is add some drip tape to this one. But for this bed here, which is right beside that one, we're gonna have to make a little bit of room. I'm gonna leave those collared plants there and see how long they make it. But that lettuce there, which has been holding on wonderfully, about time to get it out of there. Enjoy that this week. Make a little more room to plant some cherry tomatoes in here. All right, so it didn't take me just a minute there to get that cleaned up, and we've got some good groceries over here to enjoy this week. And just as a side note, that Bauer oak leaf lettuce that we just harvested there, highly, highly recommend that variety. I think it's spelled B-A-U-E-R, something like that. But it seems to hold really well when grown in the spring as things are getting hotter, when lettuce can tend to bolt. That one seems to be pretty bolt resistant. Anyways, back in the bed here, we've probably got more drip lines than we need, but I'm gonna leave them. It's not gonna hurt to have some extra water for these tomato plants we're gonna be putting here. That drip line that's closest to me, it was buried. I pulled it up, added some staples just so I could kind of see where it's at. Now, like I said, because of those collard plants, we're just gonna be planting one side of this raised bed, but let's just assume it was empty. How many tomato plants could we actually fit in there? So that particular configuration for these 12-in-1 Ollie Garden beds is 44 inches wide by 76 inches long. So let's just say approximately four foot by six foot. Now you could just plant one or two tomato plants in that bed. They would be nice and happy, no need to crowd them in there. But if you're wanting to plant as many in there as possible, Let's talk about the limits there. So I think you could get away with two rows of plants in a four foot wide bed. If we're doing indeterminate plants, cherry tomatoes like we're gonna be planting today, or maybe larger beefsteak indeterminates, I think three plants per row is probably all you're gonna be able to squeeze in there because those plants are gonna get larger. If you were doing determinate tomatoes though, I think you could squeeze four plants per row. You'd be planting them a little closer than the two foot we did in our in-ground garden a few videos ago, but I think you could get away with it. They would need to kind of lean on each other a little bit, but that would be all right. So in a four by six bed, say six indeterminates, maybe eight determinants. And some of that would depend on what type of trellis you're gonna be using for your tomatoes or your peppers. For these cherry tomatoes we're gonna plant in a minute, I'm gonna be using these sturdy cages here. And I know I can probably only fit about three of these cages comfortably along that row there. With the Florida Weave though, 
If you're doing that with the shorter determinate tomatoes, you want them to lean on each other and you can stack them in there a little tighter. So your trellis may limit you somewhat or may allow you to put more tomato plants within the row. Now I'm not gonna place these cages in here permanently for the season just yet, but I do need to figure out where I'm gonna put my plants based on how much space this cage needs. So I could do it right there. Or I could scoot it over to right there. I think I like that there better. Well, we can put our tomato plant right there and both of those tape lines can feed a single plant. And so if we want to be able to fit three of these cages in this row, we probably need to plant this one or put this cage as close to the front of the row as possible. Probably about right there. So I'm going to scratch me out a little hole right there so I know to put one tomato plant right there and then just kind of equally make two more holes along this row so we've got us three little holes dug between those two lines of tape now let's go get some plants so in this spot i think i'm going to plant two of these torangina cherry tomatoes my absolute favorite cherry tomato variety highly recommend if you've never tried it and then i have this one right here a variety called supernova grape now these plants are bigger than those plants because these got leggy earlier we had to step them up so one of my torangina plants is going to be that big another one's going to get plucked from in there somewhere wherever that lane of torangina plants is one will be smaller but that'll be all right they'll catch up to each other pretty quick and i also have a few plants of this variety here called everglades cherry but those are really slow to germinate they're not nearly big enough to transplant yet we'll find another spot for those i do want to try that variety but they're not going in this bit so i think we'll do a torangina plant there maybe the supernova grape in the middle and then the other torangina plant on the end here that way if this supernova grape for some reason doesn't make it i know i can count on these two here and they'll get bushy enough to kind of fill in the gap there now because these plants here are a little taller i am going to plant these deeper so we're going to scratch out i don't know about a six seven inch deep hole there put a nice handful of coop grow in that hole and then see if we can get our transplant out you see we got a nice root ball on that baby right there get her down in there just like that no i don't prune any of the leaves or anything like that when i'm planting just put them in the ground we'll do the same thing here with our supernova grape healthy dose of coop grow down there oh some reason we didn't have soil all the way to the bottom of that one still got a really nice root ball there go ahead and get some dirt around that one it should be nice and happy and we'll get this last one over here planted this one isn't near as big so we won't plant it quite as deep so there's our three cherry tomato plants and if those collards weren't there we probably could put three more on the other side once those get a little bit bigger we'll put our cages around them so they got plenty of support now over here in this bed it's clean and ready to plant but we don't have any drip tape down at the moment we do have this main line here and i thought about replacing this because for each side of it we've got a hole there and a hole there and i thought well i really only need one line here and one line there but then i got to thinking it's not going to hurt to have some extra water in these raised beds since they tend to dry out so fast so because those holes are already in our main line, we're going to do two lines of tape per row of peppers. Had these drip lines laying around here. I pulled them out of another bed. So all we got to do is pop them back in there. One there, one there. We'll get some staples, straighten those out and do the same thing over here. All right, so now we got those drip lines straightened out, got the water turned on, got them stapled down, and we're ready to plant some peppers. So for peppers, it's kind of the same situation it is with tomatoes or any vegetable for that matter. If we wanted to just plant two pepper plants in that bed, we could do that. Maybe surround those plants with some zinnias, some marigolds, some basil, and do a little companion planting. But let's assume we want to make the most out of that bed and put as many pepper plants in there as possible. So I'm going to be using the Florida Weave on these raised bed peppers, but if I was using cages, I might not be able to put as many plants in there. It goes back to that whole 
depends on your trellis thing I mentioned earlier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four pepper plants per row, so eight plants total in that bed. I might could get away with putting five plants per row and ten pepper plants per bed. Might even could do three rows of peppers in that bed, but I don't really want to be reaching over one row of peppers to harvest another. So for me, two rows is safe, four plants per row. And I do normally step up my pepper plants to this two and a half inch pot before I put them in the ground, but that has always been when I'm putting them in the in ground garden. If I put a little pepper plant like this in the in ground garden and Stella's big old tail steps on one, it usually doesn't recover. Since we're in the raised beds, I don't have to worry about these getting trampled. I don't have to take that extra step of putting it into the bigger pot. And we've got a nice looking pepper plug here, should do just fine. You know what, scratch what I just said. I just realized something here. This drip tape has a 12 inch emitter spacing and if I put a plant every other emitter, I'm only gonna get three per row here, not the four I wanted. So we're gonna change things up a little bit. We're gonna plant a plant beside every emitter. There are five emitters in this row. So we're gonna go five plants per row instead of four plants per row, putting them a foot apart, which should be okay because with the Florida weave, they'll be able to lean on each other. I've already got a King Arthur bell pepper plant right here. I'm about to put another one right there. And some of these pepper plugs, especially my bell peppers, aren't massive. So we don't need to make too big of a hole. Just a little hole there. A little coop grow down in there. Put a little pepper baby in there. Get it nice and snug. It should be good. So two bell peppers. And we've got some poblano, some serrano, some Santa Fe grand, some Italian hot peppers. We'll just have a mix of all different kinds in here. All right, all right, all right. We managed to squeeze 10 pepper plants in there. Still got a decent amount of room down the middle there. Might wait a little while, see how big these plants get. We could always throw some flowers down the middle there, maybe a little basil, something like that. So we got two King Arthur, two Baron Poblano, a Massilia Italian hot on the end. And then right here, we've got two Serrano, two Santa Fe Grand, and another Massilia on that end. So I hope you enjoyed the video today and if you're a seasoned raised bed gardener let me know in the comments below how many tomato or pepper plants you would have tried to squeeze in those beds there. And if you haven't gotten your pepper seeds started yet or maybe you're looking to start more you can find those King Arthur bell pepper seeds and Baron Poblano seeds on our website at LazyDogFarm.com along with these raised beds that Coop Grow Fertilizer and a lot of the stuff we use around here. And if you want to know more about how we fertilize those seedlings to get them looking nice and healthy watch this video and we'll break it down for you kind of walk you through the process. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.